somebody who's going to support President Trump, somebody who's going to stand there to build the wall in sanctuary cities. They're going to be somebody who's going to vote for tax cuts and who's going to stand for tax cuts 2.0. Tax cuts are working. Let's do the second group and to really speed up the economy a little bit more. And this is what Tennesseans want. Now, they also know that my opponent is not going to be there to stand with President Trump to build a wall in sanctuary cities because as governor, he gave valid state-issued driving certificates to illegal aliens. He made our state a magnet. He is from the party that is wanting to abolish ICE. And many of you in this room have done exactly what I've done. You fought against sex trafficking human trafficking, labor trafficking, drug trafficking, and gangs. And you know every single day, every single day, ICE is working with our local law enforcement. I see Sheriff Long over here. And that they are helping to rid our streets and communities of those groups that would seek to do harm in our communities. Also, people know, and Tennesseans know, that Phil Bredesen called the tax cuts crumbs. He said he would have voted no. And they want a senator who's going to be solid, rock solid on that. They also know that if Phil Bredesen were to win, he would go to DC and his first vote, his very first vote would be for Chuck Schumer. Then he would vote for Dianne Feinstein to head Senate Judiciary. That means no more constitutional judges for the federal bench or the Supreme Court. He would vote for Elizabeth Warren to head Senate Finance, which means the tax cuts would be repealed. Phil Bredesen would be vote to repeal the Trump tax cuts. They know that he would support Bernie Sanders for chairman of the Budget Committee. We think $20 trillion in debt is too much. Think about what would happen with someone who thinks you should have free education, guaranteed income, guaranteed income, free housing, and those principles. And then he would support Patty Murray, who wants government-run single-payer health care to be chairman of Senate Health, and have her take that chairmanship away from our senior senator, Lamar Alexander. Now, this is what this election is about. It's not about the past, it's about the future. And we are delighted that you are here. We ask for your help, we ask for your support, and to work with us to make certain we not only win this race, but we win our governor's seat. We keep the super majorities in the state house and the state senate so that our next Republican governor is going to be able to continue the great work that Governor Haslam has done. And I've got to tell you, we are so thrilled that Governor Haslam is here this morning. He has done a fantastic job. Two terms as a governor. I like the fact that not only are we regularly talked about as being one of the top places in the country for business, we are also talked about as being one of the states that is innovating in delivering education. 
in improving children's scores. And I look at Cheryl and Judy and so many of the teachers that are in here, and I know that they are thrilled that there has been a governor who has strengthened that relationship with the classroom teacher and empowered them to make a difference in the lives of the students that are in front of them. So it is an honor to have him here today as we celebrate this election day. Please welcome Governor Bill Hassel. in a second, but uh, I was reminded driving down here eight years ago on election day, I ended up right here as the last place that I came. Uh, and some of you, so it's, it's funny how the world comes back around, and a lot of you uh, were here uh, that night. I will say this, not as many. <laughs> uh, we had a really good crowd that night, but it looks kind of skimpy compared to this. So, uh, lesson learned. Uh, but so many of you all have helped us, and Chrissy and I are really, really grateful. Now, I want to shift and talk about this race. Um, here's what is getting ready to happen. The uh, Democratic Senate Campaign Committee uh, is going to buy and has already bought millions of dollars worth of campaign ads. Uh, there will be other folks. Uh, there will be George Soros and Tom Steyer and a lot of the labor union groups, all of whom will be buying ads in addition to what the Bredesen campaign will be running. And uh, if you think you've seen a whole lot of political ads in the primary, uh, well, you haven't seen anything yet. And in that blurry, there, uh, that blizzard of ads, there will be a lot of people who will try to describe Marcia in a way that you won't recognize. Here's your role and our role, is to remind people all over the state of the Marcia that you've known for a long time and why you are here today supporting her. Remind them of the work that she's done in the United States Congress, the work she did in the Tennessee State Legislature. But even more than that, a lot of you all have known Marsha and Chuck for years. The church that Chrissy and I go to uh, in, uh, in Nashville was one of the founding uh, families was the Blackburn family. A lot of you all might even remember back when she was in business, uh, working for Southwest and one of the, the first really female business pioneers uh, in that in that whole realm uh, and did an outstanding job. So the folks that are going to kind of put up a caricature, one of your roles is to say, you know, that's not really true. Your other folks, your other role is to remind people uh, of just what Marcia said. It's a pretty simple thing. Like it's about who do you want to control the Senate. There will be different chairpersons uh, according to who the majority leader of the United States Senate is. It is that simple. And you gave the example of Patty Murray versus Lamar Alexander, and you can keep going down from judicial, uh, from Grassley to Feinstein on. And that will have a dramatic impact on so many things in this country. So I'm here today to encourage you uh, to, A, to go vote, like Jack said. I ran for mayor the very first time back in 2003 in Knoxville, and I barely, barely won. Anybody that's ever been in a close election knows what it's like to wait for the last precinct to come in. And I had worked for like a year and we had really busted our rear ends, just knocking on every door we could. The next Sunday I'm at church and I run to one of my very best friends. And we really one of my very, very best friends. He goes, wow, Bill, I didn't know it was going to be that close. If I'd known it was going to, going to be that close, I would have voted. <laughs> 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 you think I've been doing it for the last year. <laughs> so go vote now and make certain you're marshalling people to go vote in November. It really is that simple. This is an incredible privilege that we have. Uh, and uh, I hope that you remind people that this, this really difficult thing called democracy is also the most wonderful thing that there is. Uh, and the blessing that we have to live in a place where we literally get to decide who we want to represent us. So. I'm here to say uh, I am thrilled that Marsha uh, is our candidate for the United States Senate and that I honestly believe she will be our next, our next United States Senator. Uh, I'm pleased to see such a crowd here, but don't stop here. It's really fun to come to breakfast and see your friends and cheer when everybody else cheers. But the hard work is going to explain to people, here's why I'm for uh, Marsha. So 
thank you. Congratulations on an incredible start. I know tonight will be a really, really fun night. Well, there's a hard, uh, how many days is it till, till the general like somebody brought in your house? 96. 96. <laughs> <laughs> right there is how you know who the candidate is. <laughs> the last time I ran, I could have told you how many hours there were like, in the last three weeks, okay? And that's the last thing I'll say is this. a lot of you are here because you're, you have been friends of Marsha and Chuck's and the Blackburn family for a long time. This is hard stuff. Okay, if, if you've ever run for a race, or if you haven't, running is incredibly difficult. It's maybe one of the most personally difficult things that you can do. And so the last role is that is to support them, encourage them, help them in the election, but just as their friends to encourage them along the way. Uh, this is a difficult journey, but it's one that will end. I'm pretty confident in 96 days, there'll be a whole group of us, to, a bigger group together, uh, celebrating the election of Marshall Blackbird as our next United States Senate. Thanks so much.